Okay, so what is the Church of Christ? The Church of Christ believes that you have to get baptized in water for salvation. Now, we deny that. We don't believe that you have to get water baptized for salvation. I've talked to some Church of Christ people. They like to use the tactic that, well, you're from a Baptist church, and you guys are hypocritical for being Baptist when you don't believe in baptism for salvation. So I heard that quite often, okay? We're called Baptists because we got the right baptism while you guys got the wrong baptism. Yeah. Just say that next time, okay, to them. By the way, if they stress so much on baptism, why don't they call themselves Baptists? Okay, all right. Well, anyways, aside from that, let's look at John chapter 3. Let's look at John chapter 3, and then we'll read verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. Oh, you want to be a Baptist? Why don't you come to our church then, you know? Why do you have to talk bad about Baptists? Why don't you come to our church then? Why do you have to go to Church of Christ? All right, John chapter 3. This is their verse to prove water baptism for salvation. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we believe in being born again for salvation. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born. So this is how they explain born again for salvation. Verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So notice their tactic here. Their tactic in verse 5, it, shows, it seems to show that to be born again, you have to be water baptized because it says born of water and of the Spirit. So that's their tactic here. Now, the thing is, it's very easy to debunk this. What's very easy to debunk this is, did you see baptize, the word baptize anywhere? No. All it said was water, right? That's all what it said. Now, the thing here is that, look at verse 6. Jesus interpreted what he meant by born of water and born of spirit. Verse 6, that which is born of the what? Flesh is flesh. Oh, there's your born of water. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. There's your born of the spirit. Ah, you know what the answer is? Okay, so let's go through this one by one. We use John chapter 3, verse 3. You must be born again for salvation. Now, Campbellites, when they see that, oh, so Church of Christ, they're also called Campbellites, okay? In case you hear me say that from time to time. So Church of Christ, they're also called Campbellites. You might say, why? Because it was founded by a man named Alexander Campbell from the South. So he's the one that started this cult movement, and it started to spread after that. So... Campbell was the one who started this movement and then it started to spread. So that's why they were infamously called Campbellites as well, not just Church of Christ. Anyway, we use John chapter 3, verse 3. You're born again. They're going to jump. When you show them that verse, they're going to jump to verses 4 through 5. That you have to get water baptism. But wait a minute. It says born of water. It didn't say baptized by water. Why did Jesus say that? Then you jump to verse 6. It's referring to a fleshy birth born of water what do we say about a pregnant woman when she gives birth to a child her water broke see so this is a fleshy birth that's very simple now some now i there are catholics who will use catholic apologists who will use this verse too now some of them are very dishonest some catholic apologists and some church of christ apologists they're going to say well these baptists when they hear that when they hear you debate this argue about born of water, tell them this, is that uh, why would John think of some kind of uh, uh, plasma pregnancy? So that's how Baptists would argue. This is referring to, this water is referring to some plasmic, uh, plasma pregnancy or something like that, some medical terminology, uh, that they were born from that to be saved. And then they're going to use that tactic to say, you see how Baptists complicate the argument right here? But we didn't say plasma, medical terminology, so and so. We just simply said water. That's all we said. And that's a common term that is used, and that is very true. How were we all born? 
we were all born from water as well. That's very simple to understand. How is that a complicated term? They're going to focus on the plasma, the pregnancy, the plas plasma pregnancy, stuff like that. Not on the water. But Jesus, when he's talking about being born of water, he's not thinking of some complicated medical terminologies here. He's thinking simply right here, just water. It's that simple. Because we we're all born from water. But he interpreted it at verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Why did Jesus say that then, huh? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. After he said you're born from water and of the spirit. See? So this proves that this is a referring to not to water baptism, but a fleshy birth. Now, if they like to use water, look at Genesis 7. Genesis 7. Well, because it says water, so... Now, here's the thing. If you see anywhere where it mentions water in relation to salvation, they will automatically assume that's referring to water baptism. Well, if that's the case, then you show them Genesis chapter 7 and verse 19. Now, how many of you think water baptism on this? Genesis 7, verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the water mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was dry land died, uh, let's skip down over here. Uh, the last part of verse 23, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. So did you think all the world and all the animals who were in, that, in those waters, that they got baptized for salvation? No. See, that's why you got to look at the context of what water is. Just because this is water, don't automatically assume baptism. That's important to understand. You got to see what the context is referring to. All right, let's also look at uh, John chapter 3. Again, John chapter 3. By the way, the verse showed you how to get born again. They didn't keep reading John 3. They just jumped down. They skipped forward. But look at John chapter 3, verse 15. Verse 15. They need to keep reading here. And if they kept reading, then they would see what this born again is that Jesus was referring to. It's by believing on Jesus Christ for salvation, folks. Verse 15, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, that's the context of born again. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Okay, my question is this. If you think that this is referring to baptism for salvation, what you need to do is this. They like to tackle this one. Apologists. Some of them are kind of smart apologists. They'll try to tackle this one. When they try to tackle this one, all you have to do is this. If you think it's referring to baptism, why doesn't it say baptism in, throughout that entire chapter? That whole chapter of Jesus' discussion with them shows no water baptism whatsoever. But it mentions about believing, though. So what's stronger here? Born again. Born again, is it by believing or baptism? I mean, Jesus mentioned believing on Christ several times here. Let's also look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Okay, here's their other favorite verse. They confuse water with baptism and baptism with water. So that's their tactic. You can't confuse the two terms together. All right, we're going to look at Romans chapter 6. Then we're going to look at verses 3 through 6. Okay, notice right here it says baptism. So because it says baptism, we must have been saved by water baptism. Okay, look at Romans chapter 6. We'll read verse 3. Paul says right here, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Alike as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 
Uh, let's see. So notice right here from verses, you can keep reading down, 5 and 6. It seems to show that because baptism was mentioned here, we got saved by baptism. Now, here's the problem again. Do you see water anywhere in that chapter? No, you don't see water anywhere there at all. See, they automatically confuse water with baptism and baptism with water. You might say, doesn't baptism mean water, Pastor? Of course not. Look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Baptism is simply... Fire, spirit, suffering. There's a baptism of suffering. Didn't you know that? Okay, look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Notice that John the Baptist, and he should know about baptism, right? John the Baptist, he even realized there was a different baptism. Not all of it is just water. Look at Mark chapter 1. And then uh, we'll read verse 8. Verse 8. The Word of God says, I indeed, this is John the Baptist speaking, I indeed have baptized you with water, but He, Jesus, shall baptize you with water. It says right here, with the Holy Ghost, and He's right too, fire as well. If you look at Matthew chapter 3, Jesus baptized with fire. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you don't want to be baptized with fire. <laughs> yeah, right. Baptism of fire is hell, actually, in Matthew chapter 3. So, you got to realize this. See, there are different baptisms. <coughs> different baptisms. So, our friend here, he mentioned fire right here. So, that's one. Baptism of fire. Good point. The Bible shows baptism of suffering. I don't know if you knew that. Baptism of the Holy Spirit right here. So, think about this. In Romans chapter 6, go back there. Verse 3. Verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. What is this baptism then? Is this water? Or is it more accurate to say the Holy Ghost? Remember, John the Baptist, what did he say in Mark 1? I baptize you with water, but he, Jesus, he, Jesus, will baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost. Look at Romans 6, 3. Who's the one that baptized? Who's involved in this baptism? Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into what? Jesus Christ. Remember Mark 1? Jesus will baptize you with what? When you got saved, didn't the Holy Ghost went inside you and immersed you? There's your simple answer. See that? Oh, by the way, um, you can write this. This is a side note. We're not going to turn there, but here's a side note. Um, oh, let's uh, look at 1 Corinthians 12. I forgot this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is even more play. Look at 1 Corinthians 12. They confuse water with baptism and baptism with water. Don't let that fool you. So whenever you see a verse that says baptize, whenever you see a verse mentions water, don't let that fool you. That's good advice. That's a technique that you can use when Church of Christ pulls up verses on you that mentions water or baptism. Keep that in mind. Okay, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Uh, the Bible says right here, For by one Spirit, by one Spirit, are we all what? Oh, there you go. Into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink, is that water? No. Into what? One spirit. Oh, look at verse 27. Verse 27. Now ye are the body of who? Christ and members in particular. Jesus will baptize you with what? Holy Ghost. Okay, so that's how you debunk this. So here's a lesson to learn from this teaching. I showed these two particular passages to give you a lesson. An important technique you got to re remember. This will be helpful in debating too. Whenever you see these words in the verses, remember this. Don't automatically make them the same. When you do that, then you got your answer.